So let's map this back over to your recent cancellation, Zoe, because it deals with ideology, right, and Greek nationalism, and so which is an ideology, um, and it's obviously shaping those individuals' perception of reality. So, oh, yeah. what that happened? How did you get canceled, and what was the result? Well, I didn't really get canceled. I got bullied. Is that exactly the same? I got bullied online. Uh, what happened is that I gave an interview, a Greek interview in a Greek podcast, and the interview went great, actually. I even got like leads and clients from it and a lot of new followers and positive feedback. But in one of the small clips that were promoting the episode and was uploaded on TikTok by the journalist, I was speaking Greek, but I actually used a lot of English words to describe specific concepts and definitions that are much easier to describe in English than in Greek. Because, by the way, there are many words like concept, for example, or coach that we don't really have as concept in Greek. Therefore, it's much easier to, to explain them in English. And the, the amount of negative comments I received for speaking English and polluting our beautiful language, and uh, they, they even said I'm not educated and I shouldn't have an opinion, and how dare I use English when we have the most beautiful language in the world. It was insane. I couldn't believe it. And how they, they talked about me, the words they used. And what I was saying before is that I'm a psychologist. I'm not like an artist. I'm not used to that. It was insane for me to just go in and seeing all these people saying that I shouldn't have an opinion and how dare I, and I'm not a Greek enough. And uh, I, oh. I also, yeah. <laughs> and another thing, they said like, what is she trying to do? To, does she think she's important because she uses English words and uh, she's just, uh, you know, uh, basic and she, she can't speak proper Greek. And even if we give her a dictionary, she wouldn't be able to find the Greek words in there, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> is, Greek, is, is Greeklish a common spoken language in Greece? I mean, <laughs> that's good, Jonah. Like well, because it, because I know in, in, in India they have, I think it's called Hing. Hing uh, what's the? They, 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 there's a mash of English and, and Hindi, and it's like in English or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like there might be a there's a Greeklish uh, quotient. To there is a lot of, actually, there is insane amount of British. But they, uh, what was interesting for me, there were two things. One thing was that uh, the lack of empathy in the sense of everyone assumed that the reason I speak so, so much English is because I want to look important that I speak English. And yeah. no one thought that, like, even if you check my own TikTok, all of the content is in English. So the thing is that 99% of my clients are American. Therefore, I speak English nonstop. And my partner is Swedish. Therefore, I'm actually not used to using this terminology in Greek in my normal life. So my, my business language is English. So it's much more easier. It had nothing to do with everything it said. It's just that I just don't speak Greek anymore so much. That's it. And the second thing that was crazy for me was that by now, we all know how social media algorithms work, right? We all know right. that the more like haters, amp it get, up. the more trash. <laughs> exactly. So I was like, do they know they actually support me? The only reason this video got viral and I got so many new clients is because they put a pose in their lives to just write 1,000 words saying that I don't know anything. And I was like, they support me. And they're just confused. Like, they're supporters, but they're confused about it. Confused supporters. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, one hundred and one. Um, yeah. you, you you know, hug your haters. That's what you got to do. You That's just right. gotta. Yeah, you can say that in English too. I say I'm gonna hug my haters. <laughs> they'll, they'll they'll love that. They'll love that. Well, okay. So I'm interested in something. Um, if you don't mind, Dan and Joan, I'd like to ask Zoe oh. a question here. Um, because I'm fascinated by by sort of how this works in a cultural context that's so totally outside of my own. Um, the French believe their language is beautiful. And that it cannot be watered down. Uh, the Greeks believe their language is beautiful and cannot be watered down. And yet, the the dominant language, quite frankly, for business, to your point, is English. Um, there's a lot of not only cultural, but psychological and, and, and dissonance there. And this actually, I think, ties into that historical amnesia thing you were talking about, the way people are, are educated, right, um, in high school. So... <sighs> Are you surprised by the behavior or were you just surprised by the by the virulence of it, by the speed with which it got to you? Like which one was more okay. surprising, the speed or the behavior? 
I'm just sad that uh, there's so much ignorance and people are so afraid of change that it's so much easier for them to believe that the world is going to stop from changing than actually find a way to adapt. And this doesn't only go to language. It goes to informatics. It goes to everything. Uh, we had recently with Joda and Dan the same discussion about social media and how everyone was in the beginning of social media like demonizing them and be like, they're going to know it's not going to be a big thing and they're ruining lives. And the same thing happens now to AI. As if the fact that you're scared and the fact that it's going to change what you know is going to stop the evolution from whatever evolution is. The thing is that Greek is such a hard language. And by the way, my Greek, I think it's above average, according to everyone who speaks Greek. Right. <laughs> In general. The thing is that it's a very hard language. It could never be. Uh, and by the way, French. I also speak French and I also speak German and English. So the thing is that French is also a very difficult language. These languages are so difficult, they would never be business languages. English is such an easy language. And then at the same time, if you add to it that the States is a very big country, and if you add to the mix also English colonization, it makes perfect sense that English is a global wait, language. Did you, did, wait, did you just say English is, a, is an easy language? It is a very easy language. Oh, but, oh I've heard that before. Yeah, from uh, non-English really? speakers. Oh, yeah. It's an amazing easy language. It's a very easy language. Okay. Are you kidding me? It's like yeah. if you, you got, we, we struggle We struggle with it here. It's the dominant language here. We struggle with it here. We, we can barely speak it ourselves. So. That, yeah. That's right. It's not exactly. <laughs> maybe we know too much. Yeah, no. I found Spanish to be actually a very easy language and it compared yeah. to English. Yeah. So, but well. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing is I that like, languages like Greek and French, uh, they're objectively difficult. And another thing is that I don't see why people, instead of focusing that we have an easy language that's already being spoken from, for so many, from so many people in the world. And there are the movies, there is the music, there is, these are big countries, both like England with the colonization of course, if you add to it, and then the States. They make it even easier for us to learn English. And then mm -hmm. instead of focusing on communication and connection, that it's actually the fact that we can all speak English at one report makes it easier. We just focus on what? On the past? Past is gone. It's nice to remember your history. It's very important. And that's why I really believe that we should actually read and no one reads anymore. And you, Jola, you're wondering why Kunter is important. Because you need to know who you are and you need to understand how these people had to go through and their ideas because it's the only way that we will not not just make these mistakes, but we, we will get to understand ourselves faster and better. And I, I feel so sad that our brains are so fried up by the concepts of like productivity and uh, be, be efficient that we really have to wonder if literature is important anymore. And there are people, young people, when I give lectures, that come to me and say, I don't read the novels. I find them a waste of my time. I only read leadership uh. books. And uh, what... The fact, like, really, really, you really think that you don't need any context anymore. You really think that that's enough. You read the leadership book, and what are you going to do with it? Because, frankly, I've learned so much more from literature than I've learned from any leadership book on the world. And the reason is that I can put these things into actual perspective. I can see how these things operated in a concept and the context that makes sense. See, I need her to speak. I need so Zoe. I need you to, to say everything that you just said and put it in front of my podcast, and I'll just run it as an intro, and then I'll just run the thing. Because, like, literally, you said that's the entire conceit of my own podcast. That's the entire thing. Is that, dear God, why? I say it at the beginning of all my shorts episodes because reading and understanding literature is better than reading and trying to understand yet another business book. Exactly. And I write business books. Like, give me a break. Don't try to understand mine. Go read Jane Austen if you want to understand emotional intelligence. Maybe <laughs> someone should write a series of novels. There's a business opportunity. Someone nope. who goes and pur purposely writes a series of... I knew that. <laughs> no. Did I tell you? I'm writing oh, you do? Okay, so you know where I'm going with this thought. Okay, all right. I'm, going, I'm, I'm trying to write a book about burnout, and I also use comic elements and several other things. Oh, I'm, I can't wait. So I love I love to hear more about that. Actually, what so what's what's your thinking around that? Well, I'm, I actually collaborated with uh, an author friend of mine who is also like my best friend. He's also a musician, an opera singer, and an awarded author. And the reason I did this collaboration wasn't because I didn't have the burnout knowledge. I mean, I'm the expert in burnout, and the book is about burnout. But I really needed someone to make sure that our book is going to maintain the novel 
uh, style and it's not going to be another self-help mm-hmm. book. Yeah, I want it to be sentimental. I want it to have funny stories inside. I want it to be a book that gives you the concept of burnout and how to deal with it, but it's not really a self-help book. And we even now collaborate with a cartoonist, so it's going to be very fun. Oh, cool. I'm excited. 